Hi, my name is Taylor Pettit from the channel by the same name, Taylor Pettit. This is what's in the back of my makeup drawer or drawers, plural, if you're like me. <laughs> so in this video, I'll be going over just a bunch of makeup products that I've happened across over the years that just didn't really do it for me. Whether it was me or the products themselves, these just are a big no for me. <laughs> and of course, make sure you subscribe to We Search's YouTube channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified whenever we upload a new video. We're determined to bring you honest reviews on the newest makeup products. And without further ado, let's get started. I have the Urban Decay All Nighter Foundation. I got this when I was a young babe of 15. I didn't know that I really shouldn't use this foundation. Full coverage, I went and bought it. Full coverage everything. This was back when I did not have a good understanding at all of skincare. And my, my skin is very dry. It is so dry. And this, this is so mattifying. It, it advertises as oil absorbing. And I, I didn't realize that that was an issue. And by the time I like started working at Sephora and everything, my boss was just like, okay, Taylor, what foundation do you use? And I'm like, Urban Decay All Nighter. And she's like, why are you doing that to yourself? And I just didn't understand it. And it took me so long to just grasp the fact that this was absorbing any excess oil in my skin, which wasn't much to begin with, but it just is so bad. And I'd get within the first like couple hours of wearing it, my skin just like looked like the moon. Like it was so crater and just like cracked and gross. It was so bad. And I haven't, I haven't touched this in years, but I, I truly did love this foundation and it is perfect if you have like normal to oily skin. But if you have dry skin, stay away from this. And next, I'm gonna go into mascara. At least as far as I know, the general public loves Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara. And this one in particular that I have an issue with is the waterproof. I have an issue with both of them. The good thing I can say about it is that it is lengthening. It is like, it makes your lashes just like stick out. Like they poke people if you look at them. That's, that truly is just something I have yet to find in another mascara. But the huge major drawback for me with this mascara and I even get it in the waterproof. On my lower lash line, I would just get smudges no matter what. Like I'd get smudges like there's no nobody's business. It was so bad. And I even went out and bought the full size uh, waterproof to try to help with that. I'd still get smudges. And this was a pain to try to take off at the end of the day because it's waterproof. But is it? Because I, I don't know why, but I would just get smudges. Just smudges everywhere. I'd get them like under the brow bone here. I'd get them, of course, all underneath my lash line. It was a mess. And the mascara I use now doesn't do it and it's not waterproof. So tell me why the waterproof mascara gives me smudges. And next I have the Tarte Tardiest Lip Paint in the shade Get It. I have an issue with the formula. This is, this gave you what my old coworker used to call butthole mouth. That's right, butthole mouth. I know it sounds gross, but just like picture it. It's a matte lipstick. And if your lips are dry, like you get the like creases, you get the lines in it. But this, it would like, in the inner, like, the intersection of your lips, it just would get super dry and kind of crack and get, it's so gross. I don't know how to describe it, but it base it just gave you butthole mouth. And I really don't recommend it to anyone because who wants butthole mouth? No one, no one. And the next one on my list is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Lip Palette. Like the color isn't there. It really isn't. It's not that pigmented and it doesn't last long. And next on my list of impulse purchases, I have the Too Faced Glitter Bomb Palette. And first off, the packaging caught my eye, so I was already hooked by then. But, you know, I swatched it. it. It's nice and glittery, so you know, that caught my eye. I swatched it, everything was good, I bought it. Went back home the next day, I apply some, like, you know, on my lid, I try to put some on, and it just, it isn't there. And it turns out you're supposed to use the Too Faced glitter glue that they sell separately with it in order for the palette to work at all. When I buy a product, 
I want to be able to apply it properly and use it to its full extent with just what comes with it. If I had to, if the only way to apply it is with the glitter glue, then y'all should have sold that with it or at least advertised it to go with the palette. And that just was a huge disappointment to me. And now this next palette, everyone has had something to say about the subculture palette from Anastasia Beverly Hills. This, you know, I was caught up in the hype. I bought it without really testing it and just because I loved, I loved the greens and the yellows and all the colors of it, the pigment wouldn't stay on. It was the patchiest like eyeshadows I've ever seen and I think it's mainly just the greens that do it. At least I haven't used this in so long, like so many months. At least from what I remember like the other shades are pretty decent except Cube. I was so excited for this. You swatch Cube and it, it's cute. It's cute, but it, it, you can't, you cannot get it to build up at all, which is so frustrating. Like the only use you can see out of this palette is when I tried to dig into Cube just to get it to work and it wouldn't. And I've heard that they reformulated it. And of course I got the first batch, so I'm stuck with just the worst of the worst, but it just, it, it was such a big disappointment, which I hate. Like. Uh, I wanted it to be so good and I just got, I, I, uh, I have no words. And last but not least, we have the Naked palettes. Uh, these are just the two that I own other than the Naked Heat, which I will go to the grave loving that palette. I love the Naked Heat palette with my whole heart. But the Naked Smoky and Naked 3, these are just the ones that I have. There's like the original Naked and I think Naked 2 they literally look the same. And that's my issue with it, they look the same. They look the same and they're not pigmented. And so many people will tell you, if you're starting out with makeup, go buy the Naked palettes. No, don't, they're $54, I think. I'm pretty sure they're $54, that's so expensive, especially with like your first like makeup palette or first high-end makeup palette. You can do so much better. Nothing against Urban Decay, I love them, but just, these are not good. The Naked Smoky palette, less so, because I, as I was like picking out these items to film this video, I'm looking at her and I'm just like, man, I created so many looks with this. They weren't good looks, but they were looks at the time. And I don't have as much of an issue with it, but then Naked 3, all the colors look the same for the most part. And they just they aren't picked. They aren't pigmented. These were the palettes, like these were the items that I had to dig out from the very back corner of my makeup drawers. These were just like stowed away in there. And if you like them, you like them. I just personally have to pass. And that's the end of my what's in the back of my makeup drawer list. And of course, if you're ever wondering about whether or not a makeup product is right for you, Weesearch.com is the perfect place to find that out. It's super easy to find out how a makeup product looks, wears, or feels from a bunch of honest reviewers, and it helps you save money. And I wanna hear what y'all think. If you've tried out any of these products before, leave a comment down below telling me what you think of it. And of course, subscribe to Weesearch's channel. We will see you guys next time. Bye.